Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our virtual student forum. Tonight, we're going to be talking all about the freshman experience at Yale. Um, my name is Mark, and I'm an admissions officer, and I am lucky enough to be joined um, by three awesome Yale students. We've got two freshmen and one senior who is a freshman counselor um, who are going to be answering all of your questions that you have about really anything related to Yale, but especially as they relate to the freshman experience. And before we dive in, I just want to make a plug for Bulldog Days. It's one week from today. The entire campus is getting so excited to really roll out the red carpet for the entire class of 2019. Um, all three of these guys will be there, and they're excited to meet you. And uh, if you come, you'll also be with probably about um, 11 or 1,200 other members of the class of 2019. So we cannot wait for you guys to come, and tonight is the deadline to register. So make sure you go to the Admitted Student website, and you find the uh, Bulldog Days link there, and you register, and then you're going to get lots more information from us. Our schedule is ready to go. It's got over 200 events just in two days. Um, I could go on and on and on, but just register. We want to see you guys here. But um, back to our forum. Um, as I said, we love your questions. This conversation really can go in any direction that you guys want it to. And you've got three different options for how you submit your questions. So I've got my prop here. And you guys can ask your questions through Google+. Plus. Um, and if you are watching Google+, Plus, you can use the question and answer app. And uh, we will see your questions up there, and we'll select them. You can also just be watching us on YouTube. And if you write in the comments on the YouTube page, we will see your questions, and we will ask them here. Also, I just posted in the Class of 2019 Facebook group with the links to this conversation. And so if you're there, I will be checking that uh, page as well for your questions. And these guys can't wait to, uh, to answer all your questions. So without further ado, I would love it if our three panelists would introduce themselves. Hello. My name is Michaela. I'm a freshman here at Yale from Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm in the lovely Pearson College, the best residential college here at Yale. Um, I'm thinking about majoring in global affairs or political science. And so really anything about international affairs or political science, I love, love doing. Um, kind of outside of the classroom, I mostly am doing a lot of IR things with um, the Yale International Relations Association, one of the largest student-run clubs here, on, here at Yale. So if you have any interest in that, let me know. I also am big in community service, and I'm a member of a Greek sorority, and uh, I also write for the politics, so all over the place, but feel free to ask about anything. Yeah, hi, I'm Arizona, but I'm actually from Georgia, which is kind of confusing. But um, I'm in Saybrook College, which is actually the best residential college at Yale before Pearson. I mean, Pearson is <laughs> a good one, but Saybrook. Um, yeah, so I'm planning on double majoring in mechanical engineering and Latin American studies. So if you have any questions about STEM at Yale or what it's like to be a person at Yale who's interested in STEM but interested in other things, I'd be happy to take those. Um, I'm also a member of Sabra Suda, which is Yale's Latin dance team. Um, and fun fact, I never danced before coming to Yale. So if there's anything new and exciting you're interested in but aren't really sure about yet, um, we'd love to have questions about that too. Hey guys, uh, my name is Chris Melendez. I'm a senior in Ezra Stiles College. Um, you know, if four years have taught me anything, it's that truly Ezra Stiles is the best college, um, despite <laughs> our lovely freshmen have told you. Um, I'm an American Studies major, um, concentrating in politics and American communities. Um, outside of the classroom, been doing some of the uh, Latin dancing for the past four years, um, done theater, um, intramural sports, um, housing for me, all that kind of stuff. So any questions about um, different majors, changing majors, I changed my major um, my freshman year, um, about college life, about freshman year life, uh, I've heard it all, so feel free to ask any questions that come to mind. Great. So we actually already have a couple questions in, and uh, both are about really the academic experience as freshmen. And so uh, this first one actually came from Franklin, and he asked a question even before the uh, conversation started, which is, which is awesome. And uh, Franklin's asking about directed studies. And I'll talk a little bit about that before we throw it over to the panelists. But he's wondering, you know, um, if you do a program like directed studies, which seems pretty time intensive, um, are you still able to get involved in extracurricular activities and have a social life? And I think maybe it's, it's a great question to get started because we can um, 
sort of expanded to just academics generally freshman year and how students balance their academic load with their social life. Um, a quick plug for directed studies, it's a really unique program that Yale offers for freshmen. It's um, a multidisciplinary program where you take three courses um, that combine to essentially give students the full breadth of what's known as the Western canon. Um, so you'll start with the Homeric epics, you will work your way all the way through um, the Renaissance and into the 20th century by the end of the semester. And it's a great opportunity to work really closely with some of Yale's top professors in the humanities um, and get to know them really closely and also develop, you know, your writing. Um, so none of our panelists here are in directed studies. Um, but we saw this question a little earlier, and Arizona said, you know what, that actually, you know, sounds like something I could talk a little bit about, you know, how to balance these things. So um, what are your thoughts on, on how you balance academics and, and social life and extracurriculars at Yale, Arizona? Yeah, so no matter what major you're pursuing or what program you're doing, be it DS or something else, um, I would say that as a freshman, you have an unbelievable number of resources available to you, um, both socially and academically. One, you have your freshman counselor, um, which I'm sure Chris will talk about also, um, who from the very first two, three days you get to Yale will sit you down, basically talk about how you set up a schedule for college, um, how classes work, things like that. You also have um, a dean of your college who looks over your schedule and basically gives you like academic guidance. Um, and at the same time, students at Yale, they seem to be really capable of balancing um, their, their academic life with their social life. And, and also, that goes to say that if you do a program like DS freshman year, um, because of the way the academics are Yale set up as a liberal arts college, you're really, really um, encouraged to basically expand all of your interests. So for me personally, I'm taking some pretty intensive prerequisites for mechanical engineering, but I'm still taking a really cool like Latin American film course at the same time. And the way that Yale's academics are set up allow for you to do that, which is great. Yeah, and um, just to add my two cents, as a freshman counselor, I've seen a lot of students um, in styles who are have chosen to do the DS program. And honestly, they're some of the most active students I know. Um, they're involved in all types of groups, whether it be cultural, social, um, you know, academic, uh, what have you. So they definitely make time, um, to, you know, to pursue their passions that aren't academic. And I think that's one of the biggest things about uh, freshman year, especially here, is that, you know, the goal is to be able to not only pursue your passions in the classroom, but also to be able to do it outside of that um, so that you can definitely find time, for sure. Excellent. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, so we have a new question that just came in that looks perfect for you, Michaela. Um, Kayla is asking here on uh, on Google, what is the sorority scene like at Yale? You know, I, I know that people don't immediately associate um, Yale necessarily with Greek life. Um, you know, what's it like? Well, thank you so much, Kayla, for the question. I think a lot of times I came to Yale, and most people here really don't think they're going to join a sorority, partly because you hear in the media or on, like in the movies that Greek life and sororities isn't really for you, and you don't really see it fitting into uh, fitting into the scene at Yale. But I think what's great is that we rest second semester. So first semester, I kind of have my friends. I have kind of everything that I know I need to make me happy here at Yale. And my story is something I can add on. Um, and so it's really great because not only do I have like a nice extra group of friends um, outside, outside of like my normal group, but also a lot of just really fun events that we do um, with our sorority. So like this weekend, we had Tech Prom that supports our, um, so, um, our charity event um, called CASA for court advocated, um, special advocates, I'm not sure. Um, but basically, um, it was a volunteer opportunity for us to kind of get the community out and get them engaged with our service, um, our kind of partner service organization. Very cool. All right, so um, we have another question coming in that I think I'm going to direct at uh, you, Chris, because as a freshman counsel, you're kind of an expert in uh, all things related to the classes that freshmen take and specifically of classes that freshmen take as they relate to what they did in high school. Um, so we have a question that I know is on students' minds a lot as, um, as the month of May arrives and AP exams come with it. And Sean's wondering, you know, uh, the AP credit question, how do students take advantage of AP or IB courses that they take in high school? How does it affect where you wind up uh, in, your, in your freshman year? Um, so the way AP and IB credits work here is um, Unlike a lot of schools, you're not granted acceleration credits, um, so you're not gonna. It's not gonna move you up, move you up in class or anything like that. Um, where they get applied is kind of your standing in the level of class that you take, especially when you look at subjects uh, like 
science subjects, um, math, that kind of deal is usually where they're most applied. Um, and so that might make the difference between, um, you know, math 120 or, you know, math 150, for example. So if you come in um, with a score of, for example, five, uh, that'll automatically qualify you for a certain level of a math class or a science class. Um, if you don't, you know, agree with that placing, you can also take a, a placement exam at the beginning of the year, and they allow you to do that for all the different languages, for math and for science um, as well. Uh, AP and IB will also apply to your language credits. So for all students at Yale, you have to have three language credits um, as part of your distributional requirements for graduation. Um, and usually that means you take three successive levels, so maybe L1, so level one through level three. Uh, but for example, like for myself, I had I got an AP uh, score of five for my Spanish um, language classes in high school, so I actually only had to take one year of advanced Spanish. So I came in and immediately took uh, a level five Spanish class and got rid of my language requirement quickly. Um, so I was free to take whatever languages I wanted without having to worry about the requirement. Um, you can also, again, you can adjust that if you don't feel comfortable with the level based on placement as well. Great. So we just got a question that I think was going to be great for you, Michaela, also. It's from Valentina, and she's asking uh, on our YouTube page um, about the global affairs major. And she has heard, and she is right, that global affairs is a, um, a collective major. So you actually apply for that major in your sophomore year. Um, and I know that that can sort of be scary for folks, and um, it's actually pretty rare. There are only a couple of those majors at Yale. Um, so just wondering, you know, uh, how competitive is that process, and, you know, what does it mean to be in a major that is uh, selective? Um, so I think partly um, the application process really makes it, um, kind of ensures that the people in the major um, is really small. It's very, very tight-knit community, um, but it also means that you have unparalleled access to the Jackson Institute that kind of houses the major and the resources there. So working one-on-one -on -one with top um, professors in the field, um, but also a lot of the really cool um, visiting scholars they bring in. Uh, I think another like really cool part is that because you kind of have to apply, you kind of um, sort people and like people are there because they really, really are interested in global affairs and they're not really kind of floating around <laughs> and just hoping that they'll be content with it. Um, I think it is a little scary at first to think about applying to a major, but what's great is that I, um, kind of throughout the process, people are there to walk you through meeting with the DUS, um, meeting with like current uh, students in the, in the major, and just to tell you kind of what they're, what they're looking for, what kind of will set you apart, and what kind of, what kind of student will fit best for the major. Just because um, doing international affairs, like, just, like being a global affairs major at Yale, isn't the only way to study international affairs. Um, for example, you can do a poli sci major with a concentration in international studies, um, which is quite similar, but um, kind of a difference in kind of the practical approach to global affairs and also the resources available to the major as well, which I think is kind of makes it was exciting. Yeah, that's a great point. And, you know, I would say the, there are only a handful of majors that are, you know, sort of selective like that. And, and as Michaela said, it's really designed just to ensure that um, students who are declaring in the major have the proper prerequisites. Um, and this would be true, you know, for, um, for Arizona, for example, you know, going into mechanical engineering. You know, even though Yale really prides itself on its, you know, liberal arts approach, and you are going to have really incredible freedom to take kind of whatever courses you want. Um, if you know that you're going to go down a certain path thinking, all right, I want to do something like engineering, I want to do global affairs, um, the system is sort of set up to ensure, um, along with your advisors, of course, like your freshman counselor, that you're taking the right courses your freshman and sophomore year so that when it comes time to apply, um, it really makes sense that you've gone, you know, in that, in that direction. Um, so great question. Uh, another one came in on YouTube that I think is a great one um, for you, Arizona. Uh, this comes from Riley. And Riley's wondering, what has been the largest surprise for you since attending uh, Yale? Is there something that you weren't expecting prior to going to college? And, um, you know, good surprises or bad surprises, he says, are fine. <laughs> All right, let me think. The biggest surprise when coming to Yale. Um, <clears throat> I guess the biggest surprise for me was when I got here, how, um, how welcoming the community is. Um, which I, you know, I figured out when I came for Bulldog Days, another shameless Bulldog Days plug. It's fantastic, and you really get a great idea of the community. But um, really, they're so like welcoming. For example, I 
came in my first week of Yale, and um, there's so many wonderful student publications on campus. And I was like, you know what? I I never wrote for any publications. My high school didn't have a newspaper. I've never published an article or anything. I want to try that. So I went my first week here at Yale to a pitch meeting for a magazine. And um, I sat through the whole pitch meeting. It was all upperclassmen. Um, and then at the end of it, I went up and talked to the editor, who's a senior. And I asked, um, I was like, hey, so I've never written before, um, but I'm really interested. Um, could you maybe point me in a direction, like, to shadow somebody just so I can, like, you know, get to know the ropes, stuff like that. He was like, oh, no, take an article, take an article. So they ended up pairing me up with a senior editor, and by my first month on campus, uh, I was published after ever, never having written before. Um, and so basically all of that to say that I've experienced that in almost everything I've done at Yale and that um, everybody's really welcoming. Um, no matter whether or not you have prior experience, um, and that was that was that was kind of a big surprise because you think about students at Yale, you think that you know they're like the best at what they do, which is true, you know, because you're all here. But um, at the same time, everyone's so encouraging of you taking up new things. Excellent, um, Michaela. Can I put you on the spot? I'm wondering if you um, also have something that surprised you in your experience so far. I think for me, um, it's kind of shocking um, to see just how busy, like in the best way, that Yale is. Partly because we go to high school, you're kind of used to like the nine to three life. You have your classes, you go to classes, and then after school, you're kind of done. Um, you go home, you do your homework. But here at Yale, you really have the whole, whole day, all 24 hours, to really plan how you want to spend your time. So I personally really like getting up early and get my homework done in the morning versus kind of staying up late at night. Um, but also. A lot of times at night I have club meetings or spending just two hours talking with my friends at dinner, which is really the one fun way to spend my time. Um, so I think that's kind of great, just to be able to have that flexibility. With that, you have to really learn time management, which I think everyone will learn kind of at college. Um, but it's great because I think Yale kind of fosters um, students to really think about how they want to just spend their time rather than how they should spend their time. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, so we've got a question here from uh, Jordan who's asking Google Plus. And, and first he's asking, because uh, he noticed the oars that are behind me here, if I'm a rower and <laughs> I'm not. No, uh, I'm, we're here in the admissions. I'm here in the admissions office. These guys are all over campus. And um, actually, the rowers here in the office, we have a couple folks who rowed, are very embarrassed by the fact that our oars are upside down. Uh, <laughs> so you know, a little, little insights in there. Uh, but his question is about balancing. Um, you know, and, and specifically wondering about balancing athletics and the rest of the Yale life. And, um, and I was not an athlete at Yale, and I don't think that any of you are actively involved in... Okay, <laughs> good. You correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think it's actually, you know, let's broaden the question a little bit. So um, the extracurricular life generally, actually Arizona and Chris, you guys are both uh, in a pretty intense extracurricular activity right now. Um, they, I'll, I'll make a shameless plug for their show. It's my favorite <laughs> dance group on campus. Sabrosura, the Latin dance group on campus, they have their big spring semester show coming up this week. So they've actually already been in rehearsal today and uh, in what's called tech week, tech week. So how do you guys manage your life when something's really intense like tech week for a show? Um, Chris, you've had, got four years of experience, so what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, you know, it's one of the lessons that you kind of learn pretty early on. Um, you kind of have to learn pretty early on. Um, and just planning ahead, I think that's one of the biggest things for me, especially when it comes to stuff like Sabo Suda, like the tech week. You kind of know that, you know, that week is coming and that, um, you know, every night that week you're going to be occupied for several hours. Um, so if you have big assignments, and I've had pretty large papers due in the middle of tech week before, um, it's one of those things that, you know, a couple weeks before, you start thinking about how do I you know, start that paper, how do I get that problem set uh, kind of out of the way the weekend before or something. Um, and then also understanding that everybody else with you is similarly in the situation of, you know, we're still students and that's your primary, um, you know, focus while being here is, you know, being a student. So there's an understanding that, you know, you find ways to get things done and a lot of that is kind of just pre-planning and coming into it ready to, um, you know, put it on paper a lot of times. Um, and actually, if, if we go back to the athletics thing, so I have never been an athlete here, but um, my small group and my small freshman council group has, out of the 14, I think five of them are varsity athletes. Um, 
And so I have like a heavy crew, uh, rower, um, uh, women's rower, women's hockey, uh, men's football, um, and men's track. So pretty intense sports. Um, and they, you know, they have their set regimen with their team. So I think that helps them a lot. Um, the teams are a great resource for um, helping athletes to not only take care of their responsibilities as you know as an athlete, whether it be the workouts, practices. Um, but also setting up part time to for studying and for eating. They do a lot of team meals. They do a lot of team study sessions. Um, so it, your coaches and your team are a huge resource for you as you know as a potential athlete to you know help you manage your time and help you plan your time. Um, like one of my one of my kids is you know freshman on the football team. He was starting. Um, they start pretty early in the morning, but uh, because of the way that they work with the students, it helps a lot. Um, so he, you know, he knew when he was going to get his homework done, and he got it done. And he also had time to you know, have a social life and be an extra extracurriculars if he wanted to be. So it's definitely something that can happen. Um, and your coaches and your teammates will be there for you as well. Oh, great. All right. So uh, we got a new question on um, YouTube that I think I'm going to point at um, Arizona, but we'll probably broaden to talk to everyone a little bit about it. Um, uh, Arjun is wondering, you know, if there's a work study component to your financial aid package, when do you actually begin working and how do you find a job on campus? Hey, all right. So um, I'm on, on financial aid. I'm actually doing a work study program with financial aid. Um, and so as soon as you get to campus, there's going to be a ton of opportunities for you to get a job. Um, both Within your residential college, you can work as a master's aide, which means helping out the master of your college. Um, there, you can get a job doing research. I have a lot of friends as freshmen who are into science and who have paid positions doing research at the medical school and other places and labs, um, which is really exciting. Um, you can also work in the admissions office. They have um, you know, a fantastic program for undergrads to help um, communicate with you guys. And um, yeah, no, work study. The great thing about that is is that even students who aren't on financial aid, I think it's only, on average, students who are doing work study work like an hour or two more than even students who aren't on it. So um, for the most part, when you're working a job on campus, one, um, the pay is fantastic. You, the minimum wage on campus is wonderful. Um, and then two, a lot of times, it's, it's really easy to find a job in something that you're interested in. Um, which is really great, and it's different, I think, from a lot of places at other schools where if you're doing work study, you end up, like, you know, having having to work a job that you're, you know, just doing in order to fulfill the requirements. Yeah, yeah so, great. Um, oh, go ahead, Christopher. No, I, um, so I, as well as uh, Arizona, full financial aid, so I had to do the work study component uh, coming in freshman year, and uh, one of the great things is they have a whole student employment website where you can go um, and there are tons of job listings right at the beginning of the school year, and that's kind of how I found uh, my first job on campus. I actually, you know, something with the chaplain's office. I uh, contacted them. They actually told me, you know, oh, we're full, um, but they hired me um, kind of on the side and said, like, you can be an alternate to start off with, um, and by, like, the first, the end of the first month, I was already, like, on a regular shift, um, and the good thing about being hired at the chaplain's office is that covered about four different positions. Uh, that I could kind of work in and out of, um, and then eventually, you know, work for the missions office and stuff like that. So there are plenty of opportunities, and like Arizona said, a lot of them are actually really great jobs. They're not, um, you know, you can have stuff at the library, but you can also be doing stuff um, in research labs or, you know, in the chaplain's office or all, all different, kind of all over campus and all over different topics. So um, it's really nice, like the minimum wage is good, and uh, it's a good way to kind of take care of your, you know, financial requirements. Oh, great. So, you know, I know um, a lot of folks are interested in thinking about money matters during the school year, but it's also really, you know, life concern for the summer um, as well. And uh, we were actually chatting as a group earlier uh, today about all the cool international experiences that these folks have planned or, or in Chris's case, have already taken advantage of. So um, Michaela is actually planning on doing one of the most popular uh, fellowship opportunities, the Light Fellowship, this summer, which... Um, you know, I don't know an exact term, but it is a giant pot of money that is available um, for yes. students specifically who want to study um, East Asian languages and cultures. So, Michaela, tell us a little bit about what you're doing this summer and how Yale's paying for it. So, 
pre- I'll preface this by saying I started Chinese this year at Yale. I took German and Latin in high school and never thought I would end up even wandering into the Chinese department. Um, and now I've kind of fallen in love with the language. Um, so this summer, I will be spending nine weeks in Beijing um, studying, mostly, take, mostly taking classes um, early in the morning till in the afternoon, and then really just exploring the city and being able to practice my Chinese skills, all fully funded um, by Yale, the Light Fellowship. And so they're paying for my flights, um, food, the program, and really just like living expenses as well. Um, so it's very, very great just to like know that I don't have to take this out of pocket if I really want to, if I'm really committed to the language. But also, I'm going to get academic credit for it as well, which is um, means I'll be able to play higher when I come back to campus in the fall, and I will have to like actually be able to get uh, get, get real world experience studying Chinese, and hopefully I'll come back a little more fluent than I am now. Great. Uh, in Arizona, you are also getting a summer experience abroad, and um, Yale's paying for it. Tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, I actually it's really exciting. Um, so I found out today that I received a fellowship. Um, it's called the Barry Fellowship. And um, the great thing about basically summer grants and fellowships here at Yale is there's a huge, um, the CIPE, the Center for, I think it's International and Professional Experience at Yale, yes. right? They, um, they help you through um, get, applying for fellowships and grants and things like that. So my fellowship, it's actually um, hosted by an, a Yale, a Yale um, alumnus who sits down one-on-one with everybody who receives the grant and, and basically it, it funds for freshmen and, and sophomores, so underclassmen, to plan their own projects somewhere abroad. So I'm going to be in Nicaragua this summer um, volunteering with an organization that does emergency response training, looking at sustainability, and it's all going to be on Yale's dime, which is really exciting. Awesome. Um, and Chris, you were talking a little bit earlier about the ISA. Uh, what does that mean for students who are on financial aid? Um, so the ISA is the International Study Abroad Award, um, and for students who are on financial aid, that essentially just means that for one summer experience uh, over the four years, um, Yale will pay a percentage of the summer program proportional to the percentage of your financial aid. So for me, that meant I'm on full financial aid, so that meant 100% uh, of the summer program was paid for up to $10,000. Um, and for reference, almost like 98%, 99% of the programs are under $10,000, um, including flights, um, accommodations, food, all that kind of stuff. So actually this past summer, um, I decided to use my ISA, um, and I spent five weeks in Singapore um, and 10 days in Cambodia doing taking classes um, and kind of doing the, the cultural experience. Um, so I, not only was I there for you know those five weeks, um, got to see like my best friend's um, home country, which is awesome. Um, but I also, you know, got two class credits that applied to my graduation credits, uh, which is a great thing about a lot of the summer programs is you can actually apply your classes as for credits here, and which gives you a little bit more flexibility with you know what you're doing um, on campus. Um, so yeah, I was there for five weeks. It was it was my first time really truly traveling, um, and it was something that I was tr- only able to do because you yeah, had this program in place. Excellent. Um, so we've been getting some questions that are about STEM, Arizona. So I'm hoping that you can um, tell us a little bit about sort of what the experience is like as a freshman. I think sometimes people imagine that if you're a freshman going into a STEM discipline, you know, it's just going to be a slog through you know big classes and stuff that you're not excited about. And and um, I was not a STEM major myself, but I know that that is not the experience. You know, of Yale students generally. So, so here you are thinking about doing a double major, one of which is a you know pretty intensive engineering degree. Uh, what do your classes look like as a freshman? So, as um, a freshman doing STEM at Yale, um, I think that STEM at Yale is really it's it's unique in that you have the opportunity to take a variety of classes. Like I said earlier, I'm planning on on studying both mechanical engineering and Latin American studies, which means that. I'm taking, you know, multivariable calculus this semester and electricity and magnetism, like a uh, big freshman physics course. But I'm also taking a Latin American film studies class where I get to watch movies and analyze them and things like that. Um, which goes to sit, like, and, and to say, I guess, that um, both sides are equally as fantastic. So, for example, my physics class, um, it's a huge freshman physics course. It's basically just like university physics. Um, and it's a prerequisite for most engineering majors, most STEM majors, really. Um, in, including kids who are pre-med. And it's actually taught by Meg Uri, 
who is currently the um, the president of the American Astronomical Society. I mean, she is a superstar, pun kind of intended, in, <laughs> in her field. Um, and here she is teaching a class of, you know, 80 freshmen and meeting with us three times a week for study hall, things like that. So um, since, you know, um, STEM at Yale, it's, it's both integrated into the school, but it also has its own unique, you know, um, presence on campus with a fantastic faculty. The resources are wonderful. We have the CEID, which is totally unique. Um, I don't think any other school has anything like it. It's the Center for Engineering, Innovation, and Design, which is a 24-hour engineering center. And let me tell you, anybody who did robotics in high school, this place is fantastic. It has um, laser engravers, 3D printers, um, and all the materials are free. So you can basically just come any time of day and laser engrave things or work in the shop where they have like all the electronic equipment you could imagine, Arduinos, everything. So get psyched about the CEID at Yale. Awesome. That's a great question. Uh, we've got a new question here on, um, on Google that I think would be great for you, Michaela. Uh, Mark is wondering, um, you know, how have you interacted with New Haven during your time at Yale? Um, you know, do you find that your extracurriculars are sort of centered around campus or, or around the city? Yeah. Um, so actually, kind of on both fronts, um, my community service group called Hemispheres. I'm actually on the director for. I'm really excited about that. And every week we host classes here at Yale for New Haven high schoolers, so we can teach them about Molly Wen, um, and more more importantly about global affairs in general. So this week we had a class on education around the world. Um, and next week we're doing cybersecurity. So it's really just a range of topics, which is really exciting, but also. Um, uh, they can, the students also compete at our Malian conference here at Yale. We also sent a student to Budapest and to Philadelphia, and we took a trip to D.C. to visit um, with the, um, the ambassadors in the Jordanian embassy and with this, um, the Tennessee senator, uh, Bob Corker. So we're kind of all over the place, um, but I think Yale does a really good job, especially through community service, of really engaging with the New Haven community. Um, we have something called Dwight Hall, which is our um, student organization, kind of umbrella organization for all community service groups here at Yale, which is really great. So you can just go there and say, I have an idea for a new group. Like, is there something already doing it? Or um, how can I get involved? And they really are there for funds, for support, for if you just need a, a physical space to meet, or connecting you to like um, organizations in New Haven as well. I've had a phenomenal experience, and like I really love Dwight Hall. Cool. Um, and Chris, maybe I, I'll throw it on to you as well. You know, with four years of experience, what have been your, some of your favorite things to do uh, in New Haven while you've been a student here? So actually, one of my favorite things, and something I just did a couple of days ago, um, so there's an organization called Junta um, out in Fairhaven. Fairhaven is a local community. Um, Population is mostly immigrants, uh, mostly Latino. Um, and so I'm involved with the, the Latino Cultural Center campus do a lot with them and have been doing a lot with them for four years and we actually get a lot of our food and um, do a lot of community events out in Fairhaven. It's about a 10 minute drive from here. Um, but you can take a bus to um, very easily. It's pretty cheap. So uh, we were actually out there and there's this really small bakery um, we call it, you know, Panaderia and they have the most amazing like sweet bread and pastries. Um, so we actually went out to this organization. We we're helping them with some uh, gardening and stuff like that. And then took a nice like pit stop there and just picked up a tray full of, uh, of pastries uh, and came back. And that's it goes to say that you know for a lot of students there's this idea of like the Yale bubble and that's something that I think a lot of people now are, are really trying to kind of break through that perception of uh, Yale is just like just campus. Um, like there's New Haven has a lot to offer um, for anybody who's you know willing to to go check it out. And I think. Um, I'm from the D.C. area, and you know I've always loved cities, and uh, I think New Haven has a particular charm about it that uh, I find personally find really appealing. So, I think to anybody who's you know thinking about you know what is it to be in New Haven, I think it's uh, it's a really vibrant community that if you're you know if you're going to go out, I think it's worth um, you know over your four years to spend some time outside of just you know just the Yale buildings, just the Yale campus, because I think uh, New Haven is really great and has a lot to offer. For sure. Great. Um, so we have another question coming in from YouTube that um, I think maybe we'll sort of lead into a different question. The question is about, all right, all the cool spaces in the residential colleges, the butteries and the gyms and all of that, um, what uh, do you have to pay to use those facilities is the question. And so, you know, Chris, you're in one of those facilities right now. Uh, tell us. 
Yeah, um, so it's, everything's free. Um, I'm actually in a music practice room um, in the Styles basement. So there's a, got a grand piano, drum set, uh, soundproof room. Um, and I'm actually, so in this basement alone, just to give you an idea, there is a computer lab, uh, a full dance studio with mirrors, the whole deal, um, where I was actually spending a couple hours today practicing, um, a gym with pretty much anything you could need, uh, a theater, an actual theater that seats about 100 people. It's fully decked out with the lights, the sound, um, backstage, the whole deal, um, and an, uh, a sound recording studio, professional sound recording, recording studio, and a, what we call the loom room, uh, which has a lot of uh, weaving supplies. Um, so that's just one example. Uh, but all of these spaces are free. Um, you can gain access to them, especially if you're in the college. It's really easy to gain access. Um, but student groups use them, individuals use them. Uh, you don't need to be associated with the group to use these spaces. Um, for example, people can reserve uh, times in the dance studio, um, in the loom room, in the recording studio. Um, and it's really great. You have an each college has an operations manager and students who are also kind of in charge of managing these spaces. So they're really accessible, you know, super clean, super well kept. Um, so it's, it's really great because, I mean, there are things that, you know, you, you couldn't really imagine yourself doing otherwise uh, that are possible because of the basement facilities. Great. Um, so we've got a new question that just came in from uh, Emma, and I, and I like this question. Um, it's saying, you know, I've heard uh, that many students enjoy sampling all the great restaurants in New Haven. Um, and the question is, you know, how do you pay <coughs> for that, right? How do you go out and, uh, you know, explore all the restaurants in New Haven? And I'll go ahead and say, you know, yes, it is true. The restaurants in New Haven are amazing. There's more than 100 restaurants within walking distance of Yale's campus. And, you know, for a lot of students, you know, myself included, it's the first time that they experience all kinds of new, uh, amazing cuisine. So we have a fabulous, you know, Ethiopian restaurant in town. We have, you know, an incredible block of Thai restaurants um, that are available. We have incredible sushi, traditional sushi, totally wacky sushi that, you know, doesn't even taste like sushi at all. Um, <laughs> we could have a whole virtual student forum just about the food in New Haven and probably just about the pizza in New Haven even. And I won't even go there right now. Um, but I think it's a good question. So, you know, um, you guys, you're on a meal plan. Most students are eating in the residential colleges and in the dining halls. But, you know, for a lot of students, it's a treat to go, you know, to a local restaurant. Um, can any of you guys maybe talk about an experience recently when, you know, you, you went out maybe with a group and, you know, what it cost you to, to go do that? I guess something really, really cool that Pearson does, and I think a lot of colleges do, is restaurant week. So they actually, it's like a lottery for students to go with. I signed up for one, with one of my friends, and we went to um, a hibachi grill with um, four other um, Pearson students. And I didn't know them before showing up, but we got our really good friends. <laughs> and during this time, it's kind of like, it's paid for by your college. And also a great time just to like know more faces within, within your college. But I think um, on the whole, the dining around campus really ranges in price. Um, you can go to a very, very like fine restaurant and spend a lot, but you can also like live on a student budget as well. Um, and I think it's great just because we have that range. So perhaps for a friend's birthday, you really want to do something special, you can kind of go to a fireplace. But Chipotle, it's always here, and then a really close walk to campus, as long as as well as like a lot of other great places. I mean, I will say I'm a personal fan of the food carts in New Haven. Oh, and yes. There's one around, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, good. <laughs> of course, you know, I get a bur I, my lunch burrito is four dollars and fifty cents uh, here, and you know, once you pay that, you never want to pay more than that, you know, for any burrito uh, <laughs> anywhere. The food, the food carts are great. The food trucks, which has recently kind of uh, taken off around here, are fantastic. Um, I think for me, like over the four years, you realize I mean, there's a lot of things you have to take care of financially, so. You know, you're not going to be eating out every day, especially if you're on a meal plan. Um, but I think, like, a lot of students plan out, you know, like, oh, you know, maybe every couple of weeks or something, going out to kind of have a, you know, a nicer meal at a restaurant or something. And I think it's, like Mark said, the restaurants around here are fantastic. The food is um, phenomenal. And, it, you know, you can kind of pick and choose, you know, if you want to go out one night, you know, this week or something like that. And just, you know, balance. I think with a lot of things to talk about, balance. Um, one of my favorite places uh, is Geronimo's. Um, it's on Crown Street. 
you know, this is uh, Mex like Tex-Mex, um, kind of New Mexico take on Tex-Mex food. Um, yeah, that's a lot. But they have a really great menu ranging from kind of more expensive stuff to pretty cheap stuff. And my favorite dish is probably like $12. Uh, but it's a huge plate of food. It's fantastic. Um, and it's one of those places that like has the feel of a really fancy restaurant. But you can go and you know, get freshly made uh, chips and guacamole for, you know, pretty cheap and, you know, have a nice time with friends without feeling like you destroyed your budget. And I'd Great. say that there are two, <clears throat> sorry, there are two, like, things that are really contested on campus. One of them is, like, who has the best pizza? The second, <laughs> what's the best coffee shop? No matter, like, that, that's a that's an argument that gets held between a lot of different people. I don't know what they believe. Mine's Who's JoJo's. Saying? JoJo's to me nope. is fantastic. JoJo's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Ride or die um. for Blue State. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. So, you know, I think one of the things that might go along with that, you know, a lot of folks, you know, it is sort of a special thing every few, you know, weeks maybe you'll go out with a group of friends, you know, for dinner. Um, but sometimes people are wondering, you know, kind of what's the weekend scene like at Yale? You know, Friday night in the dining hall, are people going to be there? Saturday, Sunday, are you still going to see folks around? You know, what do folks do um, on the weekends uh, around campus? Um, you know, Michaela, uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about what your weekends have been filled with generally. Yeah, um, so I guess this weekend, I um, Friday, Friday night, I went, went to Tacky Prom for our sorority and then went to uh, the Baker's as an acapella house, which was really great because you kind of see your friends out and we're celebrating um, one of our friends' birthdays. And then Saturday, I actually was able to go to the Kissinger's Talks, um, which we had former Secretary of State um, Kissinger coming to speak with us, who's literally phenomenal and sort of like phenomenal man in the field. And so it was great to kind of hear uh, his perspective on world order and diplomacy, but also uh, bringing a lot of really cool speakers in as well, um, kind of on top uh, on a range of issues from Ukraine to China to Iran. Um, so that was really great. And then Freshman Olympics was the Saturday as well. And so it was they really good. They won! Yes, they're not for it. Yay! We're not going to talk about this one. So Freshman Olympics is really fun just to see like beautiful weather. Like honestly, it was like the South back again, um, and so warm and sunny, and um, people are competing in dance off, rap battles, soccer, frisbee, all these really cool things. Um, and then that evening, I, it was my friend's birthday, so we went out to dinner, and then um, I actually went to a show, a stepping out show, on uh, on Saturday night as well. So it's kind of there's just so much to do here, and so it's really just kind of how you want to spend your time. I'm usually am running all over the place on the weekends, but I love I love it. That's great. That's great. Um, so we've got time for maybe one more question, and I thought we would um, sort of loop it back to um, to you, Chris, but um, also let you know all of you guys chime in. Um, so Chris, we mentioned at the at the outset that you are a freshman counselor which is a pretty cool position that Yale, um, you know, makes available to every single incoming student. Every freshman has their freshman counselor. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what that role is like, um, maybe some of the concerns that you sort of typically deal with with your freshmen, the kind of resource that you've been um, for freshmen. Um, and also, since you were also something called a peer liaison, uh, you could talk a little bit about what the PLs do uh, with the with the freshman counselors. So the lingo uh, that we hear on campus, you don't hear about freshman <coughs> counselors and peer liaisons. Of course, you hear about procos and PLs. So yeah. talk to us about procos and PLs, Chris. Yeah, for sure. So I'll start. I guess I'll start with the peer liaison program. Uh, last year, as a junior, I was a peer liaison um, for the Latino Cultural Center for La Casa. So the way the peer liaison program works is each of the cultural centers, plus the LGBT Center, uh, the International Student Center, and the Chaplain's Office. Um, have about seven or eight um, students, ranging usually from sophomores to seniors, um, who are familiar with the respective centers um, and have kind of been hired. Um, this is an actual student job, which is great, um, but have been hired to be a resource for freshmen coming in. Um, you know, welcoming them to not only you know their specific communities, but also to other resources at Yale. So, as a period in for La Casa, um, we had a group of about a hundred. A little over 100 students who who had self-identified as being Latino or Latina, who had expressed interest in being involved with the center, and we met with them. Um, so I had a group of about 15 students whom I, you know, had lunch with, you know, had froyo with, just talked about, you know, what it was like, what their experience was, 
so far, you know, how they couldn't get involved in the house, um, and stuff that was kind of outside of the Latino Cultural Center as well. Uh, we were just kind of there as kind of a friendly face, an upperclassman, um, kind of show them the ropes, just kind of be a friend. Um, as a freshman counselor, it's a little bit more of a structured program. Um, you're hired uh, junior year, at the end of junior year, um, and each college selects a number of seniors, uh, upcoming seniors, who it's essentially their job to live with the freshmen um, during their freshman year. So there's, for example, for Ezra Styles, there's eight of us, um, and we live on old campus uh, with the freshmen. So there's about 122 freshmen in Styles. Um, so the eight of us live with them. Um, so we see them all the time. We're kind of around all the time. And it's our job, you know, from day one, we sit down with them. Um, we have our small groups. We you know, talk through some of the, you know, kind of more important, you know, serious topics, of, you know, adjusting to college and uh, being here, but also just, you know, walking through classes, walking through, you know, how do I join this group? What if I want to audition for this? You know, how do I find fellowships? How do I, you know, do research? Um, what classes should I take? How do I, you know, choose an advisor? How do I navigate this um, and that? So, like, there's a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of questions your freshman year um, that you come in with. And the great thing about the freshman counselor program is that you have somebody who is, is there. They're always there. Um, and you can ask, you know, I've had students ask me really serious questions. They're dealing with something at home. Um, you know, my freshman year, I was dealing with my, my dad being sick. And that was something difficult for me to handle while also being a student here. And, you know, I always knew that I could speak to my freshman counselor and tell her, like, hey, like, I'm dealing with this. Like, how do I you know, balance this? How do I get through this? And I think the biggest things that we do as freshman counselors is being seniors who have lived, kind of lived through it all. We've been here for a long time. We've seen a lot of things. We know a lot of people. Um, just being there to listen and to facilitate. So, you know, students often come to us and just want to talk, just want to let it out. Um, and we're there to listen to that. But they also, like, have questions about how do I do these things? Um, you know, who do I talk to? And the great thing about us being seniors is that we've met a lot of people along the way who can help them. Like, I had a girl in my group who is, like, really into science. She's done a lot of research. She's done a lot of things. I don't, I don't know very much about science. Um, I was a chemistry major for about a month and a half. Um, so I, it was one of those things that, you know, I couldn't help her directly, but I have friends who, who are in the science major. So I was able to, you know, connect her with a friend and have them talk on the phone and meet, you know, and talk about some of the classes and talk about how to find research positions. And that's something that we can do very easily. Um, but we also do the fun stuff. So um, for Freshman Olympics, like, you know, the Frocos participated and we, like, had our own event. Um, and we helped them, like, get their spirit and, like, make banners. And, um, you know, we do a lot of the social activities. We have pancakes night, pancake nights every Saturday. Um, every college does their own kind of food-related study break. But um, we do pancake nights. And, you know, we had capture the flag at the beginning of the year. We do all kind of stuff with the freshmen just to create a community, not only among the freshman class, but also with the college, um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that we do as well. It's kind of bridge that gap between the freshman class and the rest of the, um, the rest of the college, and make sure that they feel comfortable and are integrated into the community. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's something that you know, it's one of the best decisions I've made. But I, I think it's not only that, but for me as a freshman, I think for a lot of freshmen, having freshman counselors available as resources, as friends, as kind of mentors, is something that can make freshman year, the transition of freshman year, a lot easier. Um, a lot smoother and, and more fun too, and more enjoyable, um, and Perfect. kind of deal with that stress. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks, uh, Chris, and thanks to all of you for asking your great questions. We're so glad you were able to join us. Um, of course, I'm going to put in another plug for Bulldog Days. The registration deadline is tonight, so we want you guys to come. There will actually be a special freshman experience panel that's at Bulldog Days that you can see on the schedule, and we'll have folks talking about. Um, STARS and direct studies and freshman counselors, peer liaisons, uh, the pre-orientation programs I know a lot of folks are curious about as well. You'll get a chance to do that and a lot more. So make sure that you register. We can't wait to see you here in New Haven. Thanks to Arizona and Chris and Michaela for uh, being here tonight. Like I said, all three of them will be there and you know, 1,100 of your classmates <laughs> will be uh, here as well. So come see us soon and uh, congratulations again class of 2019. Thanks for joining us tonight.